Dennis Hastert, we're going to go back to him now. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, as you look at uh, more of these numbers come in, coming in, and as you look at this very undecided presidential race, uh, what are you thinking about in terms of making government work in the next few years? Well, uh, clearly, uh, we have to reach across the aisle and try to do things on a bipartisan basis. I think the uh, president, uh, whoever he's going to be, and I certainly hope it's George W. Bush, is going to have to do the same. And I think uh, we're looking for people, and I think the American people are looking for people who are willing to bring people together and get things done. And uh, that's what I've tried to do since I've been speaker, and I think that's what we'll continue to do. We've noticed uh, a number of Democrats who work with you in the House have commented on the difference in style uh, between you and your predecessor, uh, Newt Gingrich. Did you go into this position deliberately wanting to be a different kind of leader in the Congress? Well, I felt very strongly when I became Speaker that uh, we had approved to the American people that we could get some things done. And I talked about a better education in this country for our kids. We talked about uh, supporting our men and women who serve this country in our national defense. We talked about balance in a budget. We talked about paying down the debt. And we talked about not taking a penny of the Social Security and Medicare Trust Fund and spending it in general revenue funds. We did those things, and especially balancing the budget, paying down the debt, and protecting Social Security. That's never been done before by any Congress. So I think that type of getting things done is what the American people wanted. Some people have had the impression that Governor Bush, uh, and I'm not clear on this, did not campaign or spend much time campaigning with or, and for Republican members of Congress. Set me straight on that. How much campaigning did he do with members of the House, members of the Senate? Well, he, he actually uh, campaigned with a lot of our members. And uh, when he was in a district, uh, our members uh, were there with him, and especially our, our members who were vulnerable and our, our challengers that we needed to get out and get some recommend, uh, uh, <clears throat> recognition. He did a very good job, and we're pleased with his cooperation. Do you agree with his characterization that, that there has been too much partisanship, too much uh, just bitter, bitterness and fighting and division in the, in the nation's capital that needs to be healed? Well, you know, I tried to get by that, beyond that when I became speaker, but uh, clearly uh, Dick Gephardt wanted to be speaker. Uh, he set on a policy of trying to stop everything so we would have a, what they call a do-nothing Congress and to try to blame that on us so they become the, the majority. It didn't happen. And in spite of what that, those tactics were, we did get a lot of things done. And uh, the things that we did do were done on a bipartisan basis. The marriage penalty was done on a bipartisan basis. Uh, tax relief on death uh, was done on a bipartisan basis. The PNTR for China was done on a bipartisan basis. The uh, sweeping well, uh, banking reform was done on a bipartisan basis. So we will continue to do that. Well, then, how, does, does George W. Bush's characterization hold up? Well, I think sometimes that people don't really see what goes on. But uh, I think the president uh, can be very helpful to us in uh, trying to help and reach across the aisle in the House and in the Senate to try to get things done on a bipartisan basis. Mr. Speaker, it's Jeff Greenfield. Some of your colleagues uh, have, have said that, that the culture has changed, that there was a time when people would battle politically and then go, go home and you know, have dinner together and meet each other's families, and that there was a kind right. of much more collegial atmosphere, and that without putting blame on one side or another, that it's become a much less civil place, that is to say, the Congress of the United States. Is the closeness of this election, do you think, potentially uh, a piece of evidence that says to people on all sides that the culture just has to change, that the sniping and the partisanship and going on television and yelling at each other with talking points is just had it? Well, I think you've watched uh, my uh, performance. I haven't uh, been on television every time you turn around. I've tried to make the house work and to bring people together to, to make that house work. I think that's what the American people want. Uh, the people, a lot of the people who are shrill uh, aren't there anymore. Uh, we've had some real changes. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, some of them even lost in this election. So I think uh, we're well on the way. Uh, I would certainly offer my hand across the aisle so we can get some things done. Well, that's when but you, you have to realize what, one other thing there is. There is a difference in philosophy. 
between the Democratic Party and the Republican Party, and we do that fighting, it's for philosophical differences as well. Well, when you when you point out that these some of the shrillness is gone and some of the bitterness uh, has faded, perhaps that's why I'm asking this characterization that George W. Bush was was talking about on the campaign trail repeatedly day after day during this campaign I guess I'm asking you does it match the reality of what you've lived with in Washington the last two years well it's been a tough time in Washington the last two years we had a, a 1.2 percent margin of error uh, anytime that four members or five members of Congress got on the, up on the wrong side of the bed you know the, the whole uh, balance of Congress uh, shifted so you know we had to work hard to keep our people together to move an agenda uh, so to, for, our, for the American people, a better agenda for our children and our grandchildren, it was tough to do. But, you know, we didn't lose many votes. Mr. Speaker, uh, today in talking with one of the people around Vice President Gore, he said if the Vice President wins, he made a bald prediction and said the patient's Bill of Rights will pass in a lame duck session of Congress. Uh, is that the way you see it, if the election were to fall to the Vice President? <laughs> Well, you know, we passed a, 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 a Bill of Rights for uh, patients uh, in the House. We passed one in 1998. And, uh, well, he's we're clearly talking that. about the one the, Dem the Democrats prefer. Well, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mr. Speaker, we, uh, we appreciate your joining us uh, from, from Aurora, Illinois. It's, uh, it's late there, it's, or I should say early there in the morning. It's early here. But uh, we all want to keep a, keep a close watch on these results. Thank and you may, very much. Maybe not so early in the morning before I had time. We'll see how all this works out. So it's good are, to be with you. Are you hearing anything we're not hearing? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just pretty. Uh, we're waiting for Florida. All right. Dennis Haster, the Speaker Thank of the you. House. Thank you so much. We appreciate the, it. Judy, that conversation you had with the Speaker remind, should remind us of a word that has not been heard for a very long time, impeachment. I mean, to think that a presidential election could have been conducted barely about a year and a half or a little less than two years no. after the president was impeached, amazing. Bernard Shaw, sir? We have a call. Let's go out to the Show Me State, Missouri, in that Senate race in which a dead man, Governor Mel Carnahan, is on the ballot. CNN is calling this for Mel Carnahan. His widow, as you know, agreed to run. And Mel Carnahan, his memory and those who support him have defeated, turning out Senator John Ashcroft, a first-term Republican senator. What a development. Yeah, what, what a Kate Snow, development. let's go quickly to Kate Snow in St. Louis. Bernie, I think you can hear the crowd here. They've got CNN on in the background, and with your announcement, a lot of excitement here. Mrs. Carnahan spoke to this crowd just a short time ago. She talked about carrying on the fire, carrying on her husband's dreams. She, of course, has not been very public in this whole campaign. In fact, voters here in Missouri only saw Mrs. Carnahan a very few times throughout this race over the last three weeks since the death of her husband. They saw her in one ad that aired on local television here. They saw her in her announcement last week when she decided that, yes, she would take the position if, if the votes were to go to her husband. But other than that, they haven't seen much of Mrs. Carnahan. She is right now at home with two of her daughters in Rolla, Missouri. That's about an hour and a half south of where we are in St. Louis. This race has been close all night long. Senator John Ashcroft just a short time ago telling his supporters that they could go home now, that he would have more news for them in the morning. We don't expect to hear from him again anytime soon. Again, very good news for the Democrats here in Missouri, especially in light of the fact that George W. Bush seems to have won this battleground state. Bernie? Kate, even though she didn't campaign per se that much, she did put up one ad, did she not, within the past seven days? She did. Last week, she started running one ad where she talked straight into the camera, a very personal kind of ad, talking about her remembrance of her husband and talking about her goals for Missouri. She does not have a public record. She has not served in public office, but she has been very vocal about the kinds of issues that she wanted to take to Washington. She's talked about education, about women's issues, about children. She's talked about reforming Social Security. And 
some other issues, tax cuts, targeted tax cuts. So she has said all along that she carries her husband's mantle and that she wanted to take that to Washington. Bernie. Kate, uh, it's, it's Jeff Greenfield, Kate. Uh, we know that Mrs. Carnahan and the Carnahan people adopted that slogan, keep the fire going, but we've heard that some Republicans were threatening a legal challenge on the ground that a dead person is not an inhabitant of the state, which Missouri law requires. Can you tell us anything about whether they intend to pursue that legal challenge? I've asked that question all night. They will not comment on what kind of legal challenge they might mount. But I might add, Jeff, that in addition to the constitutional question, there's been a lot of local news here tonight about the polling.